it. It's a prophetic implication regarding the United States just on that X. So it's right there in the writing on the law. And I think these signs are telling us that there isn't much time left. Alexis, I find it so interesting, the research that you've done, and it's in your book there. I've got a copy here too. This book is amazing on the upcoming 2024 eclipse. What's the prophetic implications for the United States? But then, but, and how you got into this because you saw the prophetic implications with 2017 eclipse, the 2023 eclipse, what opens your eyes to that these signs were signs of the last days? When I had heard that the 2017 eclipse had um, its path of totality covered seven Salem's, it sparked my curiosity and I wanted to find out if that's indeed true. Um, it took me a while though, um, about a year or so, the Lord kind of knocked me out of bed early in the morning to go uh, do some research and it just made me curious. I think that was, that was him. But uh, in doing that research, I did find some Salem's. I found much more. And uh, in, in going across, I went onto NASA Interactive Map satellite. And I wanted to look at all the locations that were covered that might have some prophetic significance. And um, so I started to write those down. Some of the very, uh, or one of the very, the very first locations that I found and this is a trigger word for some people, but it's just data. And uh, so I'm gonna tell the truth. And what was covered was a city called Donald. Okay, and again, this was the 2017 eclipse. 2017 eclipse, yes. Now, are there a lot of cities named Donald? No, I thought the same thing. And I thought, well, I'm gonna do research, go all over the United States and see if there's a lot of them, if there's any more within the path of totality or if there's any more all over the United States. Now, I didn't find any. Now, if somebody goes and finds some somewhere, that's fine, I'm open to that. I covered about 4,000 miles at various altitudes, so it's quite possible I missed a few things. But uh, one of the first locations was the city of Donald. And when you look at the path of totality, there's a, uh, that goes across, it starts in Oregon and ends at South Carolina. There's a seven year period between the 2017 eclipse and the 2024 eclipse. So um, when you look at the locations that I started to log all of those locations across the United States. And it's all the locations where it would be totally dark, correct? Right, that's the path of totality. And actually in the 2017 eclipse, the widest, widest point is 71.5 miles in width. Um, it averages out about 70. So it needs to be within that clear path of totality where the people on the ground looking up are going to see 100% coverage of the sun's disk. That's called the umbra. When you're outside that, you may see a little bit of a crescent, and that's the penumbra. So um, that's where, when people say, well, where do you draw the line? That's it. It's a sh kind of like a sharpie across the United States. So those are the locations that um, I was looking at and zooming in on. <clears throat> so... Uh, in looking at all of those different locations that I started to log, then the first one that I noticed um, was uh, where's Donald, the city of Donald. And it just so happens that at the beginning of 2017, Donald Trump became the president of the United States. Okay, well, is that coincidence? Some people may think so. Uh, but uh, there was Donald at the beginning of 2017, and pretty much anyone over the age of 12 knew who Donald was, Donald would be speaking of. Uh, right next to that is St. Paul. And as you zoom in and out on the satellite, if you zoom out, it almost becomes one. Now, I have family members who did not like Trump and family members who liked him a lot. And it really didn't matter whether you like him or you don't. But the ones who did not like him said, you know, if God can do, can work through Paul, St. Paul, who was, you know, the disciples didn't even want to have anything to do with it first, um, then quite possibly he could work through Trump. But again, if somebody sees that as coincidence, that's fine. We move on. Then one of the other locations was McCain Park. It just so happened that, unfortunately, in 2018, there was a loss of Senator McCain. So this was starting to get my attention, you know, and I continued on and on. There are many more locations that have um, prophetic significance. But I think the most fascinating, and I, I really would like to get to um, and, and, and um, expound on is um, the center, the crossover point. I'll explain what that is. The right, now I want you to get to that in a moment, but you know, okay. for, for people who are watching, um, they're just going, 
you know, why should we, even, why should we even like look at the signs in the sky? I mean, would right. the signs have anything to do with Jesus's uh, second coming? Of course, it I really want to get to that. Yeah. So what? why don't you get to that before you get to the crossover and what that, what the implications of that mean? Yes, absolutely. Well, and another thing is I know that Christians worry about astrology. And I want to explain a little bit between the difference of astronomy and astrology. Because I've been a Christian for 49 years, and over the years you wonder, oh, are we even allowed to look up? You know, that's astrology. Um, but what we need to understand is astrology is a religion, and it's an ancient religion where it still exists now, where people are worshiping the sun, the moon, the stars. They bow down to them, they pray to them, they give sacrifices to them, and they think in doing so they're going to get their prayers or their wishes, you know, answered. Um, that's not astronomy. Astronomy is we're viewing the heavens that God created, and he created them for that purpose. It's a very format that he created for us for signs and seasons. And we have it right in Genesis 1 of 14, and God said, let there be light in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs, lay, and and for seasons, moadim, and the days and the years. Now, I've heard a lot of people explain the, the, the seasons as moadim. That's true. Those are for appointed times, a solemn assembly, uh, appointed due season. Right, but, the appointed uh, times like Passover and Rosh right. Hashanah and yes. Absolutely. But they forget to take a look at the other word for signs, which is taught, And that is a signal. It's a flag, a beacon, an omen, uh, a mark, a miracle, a sign promised by prophets as pledges of certain predicted events. So we can't ignore that. So we see... God set the heavens up there for us for signs and seasons, not just feasts, as it says in this word. Um, and then we have other ones, other scriptures that, uh, like in Luke, Jesus says there's going to be signs in the sun, moon, and the stars, right? So he tells us that we're to watch. God gives us permission to watch. And in the book, I have I think, at least 15 scriptures going over uh, the heavens and, and why uh, God allows us to look into the heavens to see his signs and seasons. So, and when Jesus told us to look there toward the end times, we're allowed to do it and we shouldn't ignore it. He says, watch. Right now, I found it interesting too, because you said even with um, Jesus's first coming, Isaiah 7, 14, I mean, I got this from your, your book, which was, I was like, oh my goodness, it's like so amazing. The Lord will, himself will give you a sign, behold a virgin. Right. I'm like, oh, Oh, yeah. wow, there it is. I mean, right. and then in the book of Acts, it talks about the um, the sun and the moon and the signs. That's like part of the end time uh, end time events. So, yes, it's all over the scriptures. Right. We're not supposed to watch and, you know, worship them and think that, you know, it's going to say something like we're going to get, a, you know, a hundred dollar bill in our mailbox or something like that. But Jesus told us to watch, you know, and I say to you, we all watch. And yes, then it goes into... <laughs> Uh, the signs of, um, of when Jesus was born, you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths. This is a sign to you. You find him wrapped in swaddling cloths and in a manger. And then the Magi, you know, uh, I love the scripture where it says, and when they when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. The Magi watched the heavens, they knew the star was a sign, and they knew the meaning and reacted to the sign with rejoicing. So over and over again, God shows us that, yes, we're allowed to look into his format, the very format that he ordained for signs. Okay, now let me ask you this. Now with the 2017 eclipse, <clears throat> when was the last, uh, so it's a total solar eclipse, when was the last one before 2017? The last one was in, um, well, the last one that covered the, just the United States was actually January 11th, 1880. But um, in, let's see, the last solar, total solar eclipse that was coast to coast was 100 years, uh, almost 100 years. And that was June 8th, 1918, 99 years before the 2017 eclipse. Okay, so 1918, oh. which... You know, when I was like looking at your book and I thought, OK, what happened in 1918? And I'm not saying this is about to happen or anything like this. It's just that um, it was the end of World War One. And a lot of uh, 
nations actually got in place for end time prophecy, which all of you would have to watch my interviews with Bill Salas that explains that. But also um, there was the Spanish flu epidemic too in 1918. But right. okay, I want, yeah, continue now with the crossover because that's where uh, you, that you were about to cover. So what is yeah. the crossover? What does that mean? Okay. Well, it's the crossover point between the 2017 eclipse and the 2024 eclipse, and both are total solar eclipses, where the October 2023 eclipse, although it was significant, it's an annular eclipse. It's, it's different. Um, the crossover point is where the uh, 2024 eclipse is going to cross over the pathway of the 2017 eclipse. And that location, um, a lot of people are saying, is Carbondale. And yes, the Carbondale will be in the path of totality of both of them, but it's um, and it's the largest populated city. But um, as you see in the book, uh, in the crosshairs actually is Maconda, Illinois, and um, and it's quite an interesting place. When I first saw Maconda, I thought, okay, what does Maconda mean? You know, um, what's the meaning of the word Maconda? Well. As you'll see in the thing in the uh, book, um, Makande in Sanskrit, that's East Indian, means a woman of power. Also in um, African origin, it means woman of strength. So it just so happens that at that midpoint uh, between 2017 to 2024 and 2021, uh, Kamala Harris became vice president of the United States, right? And she is, she identifies as both black and Indian, and she's the woman of power. Um, so some people may say, "Oh well, okay, that's a that's a, a coincidence." But oh, they can they can say before. they can say coincidence, but you've got <laughs> so many things in here that so many places and locations and the meanings of those words, and they really were prophetic implications of what happened after 2017, and prophetic implications of what happened um, in 2020. 23 with both eclipses so no sorry for me it's not a coincidence but keep on going <laughs> and i and i i didn't make it up i want to make it clear that i'm reporting the data i didn't create this i didn't make it up god did it i can't control and i was very skeptical so skeptical that i thought well i'm gonna put my figure across the united states and see what comes up well it didn't work uh there was no message there and furthermore the sun and the moon don't obey me and they're not going to obey anyone else God is in control and he set this in order. Thousands, millions, whether you're a young earth or old earth, he did it, I did it. So really what I'm doing is just reporting data and then you leave it up to the individual as to what they see, but look in God's word, that's, you know, that'll back it up or it actually is creation pointing to God's word. So one of the next locations in um, Maconda, Illinois, I thought, well, is there any event or a landmark in Maconda? And so I, Further, did some research and found the Black Vulture Festival. And the Black Vulture, actually, is one of, there are many vultures. It uh, they have the annual festival there, and it gathers. All right, we're gathers once a year. And you know, where did we hear that um, that before? Where vultures are gathering? Well, in Matthew twenty four twenty eight, what did Jesus say? Wherever there is a carcass, the vultures will gather. A carcass. So okay. In my mind, I'm thinking, well, has the United States become a carcass? If it hasn't yet, uh, it's surely getting there. Personally, this is just my opinion, but I see it as a carcass on the side of the road. The vultures are circling above and they're just waiting to swoop down. The interesting thing about the black vulture or the turkey vulture, which also goes there, is, is the unique thing about it is the black vulture not only will it carry it, and that is dead, dead things, but it will also kill animals. It goes in and kills livestock. And so, and you know, that's a, carried birds are, are, um, are prohibited or not allowed, <laughs> are filthy birds. Um, and after you see the, uh, at the Black Vulture Festival, I thought, well, okay, what else is there? This is taking place. Well, I want to go back to that Black Vulture Festival because I found it interesting. You said the scripture, but the thing is, the scripture that Jesus said, which was in Matthew 24, about the vultures shows there is a carcass nearby. So these signs indicate that the end is near. I mean, that scripture has to do with the end times. So wow. here, so that's what's pretty amazing. It's just not like a scripture anywhere else that's talking about vultures and not the end times. That scripture is about the end times. 
So right. you're saying exactly with the whole chapters of Matthew 24 and 25. So it says the Lord Jesus was pointing out that the whole world would be in a state of advanced spiritual decay at the end of this age because of the spiritual deception, nations rising against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, famines, earthquakes, pestilence, persecution increasing in intensity and frequency. Yes, exactly what you're saying. It was the end times, and you brought that up. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> I got that from your book. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then when you go down, you, you look, I looked further into it. Where is this all taking place? Well, there's Giant City State Park. It's right there in Wakanda. Giant City State Park. Okay, well, I've never heard of it. Uh, where have we heard of giants in the Bible? Well, the one that stands out is just 6-4, right? And I think it's important to make a point. I'm going to read this. It says, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, when the B'nai Ha'elohim came in unto the B'nai Ha'adam and their children to them, the same becoming mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Now it says B'nai Ha'elohim. It does not say B'nai Ha'adam. These weren't men. And anytime it speaks of B'nai Ha'elohim, in the Old Testament, it is always talking about angels. And in Job, it's talking about the angels, I think, before Adam was even created. So um, it's quite clear these aren't descendants of Seth. And if people want to find out more about that, I'm not the expert. I would recommend L.A. Marzulli. Yes, and I did there several we... interviews with L.A. on this. Right. And, right. and what you point out and what he points out is as in the days of Noah, what does that mean? So now back to, okay. you know, Giant City of what you found of part of the path. So Giant City now is talking about the giants. And referring to as it was in the days of Noah. Right, so, which is another end time prophecy. Exactly. And uh, and then one last thing I thought, well, is there anything else there? Let's zoom in more. And I found located in Giant City State Park is a, a unique uh, geological formation. It's called the Devil's Stand Table. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And um, it seems that uh, it says that uh, the local folks thought it was the, they saw it as the Devil's Pulpit. So, you know, here you have Makanda, Woman of Power. And you can look at that as Kamala Harris became the vice president of the United States. Whether you like her or dislike her has nothing to do with it. And then you can think of the woman spoken of in the book of Revelation. We've got the 2024 eclipse crossing back over it. Um, you have vultures gather, gathering. So are we a carcass? Uh, giants, which is the days of Noah. And then you have the devil's stand table, um, which would mean antichrist agenda and increased demonic activity and... A lot of it's pretty clear when you look in the Bible as to what we're talking about. Um, and coincidence, well, statistics would say otherwise. So that's what is in the crossover point. That was crossed over with the 2017 eclipse, and it's going to be within that crossover point again when the 2024 eclipse um, goes over. And one other thing, I know that I think it was Mark Biltz did a little bit of uh, information on that. I haven't gone into it heavily. Um, he has some good information on that area is called Little Egypt. And um, uh, and that's because there was a, um, a salmon that was coming in 1881, I think it was, due to the snow and the frost, and people all around the area in Illinois uh, couldn't grow grain, didn't have anything. So they had to go down into Little Egypt, southern Illinois, and purchase grain. Uh, so it kind of gives you a template uh, it's a pattern uh, similar to what occurred in Egypt with Joseph. That's how I see the 2017 to 2024 eclipse. It's a seven-year period. And then you have 2024 to 2030. And when you start to look at the locations within the 2024 eclipse, it talks about Daniel and the book of Revelation. Again, the word of God is what we go to. But it's quite interesting when the Lord said that these are signs and they're for messages. And we can take a look at that. My hope is that it points you back to the Bible, makes you read and learn more uh, in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelation. Okay, Alexis, I also want you to get to more of the implications of the crossover and even what that X means, uh, the prophetic implications of that for the United States. But before, I want you to talk now about the 2023 eclipse and some of the locations that it hit and people can see the prophetic implications of that. So what were some of the cities that it, it hit? 
Okay. Well, the 2024, uh, the 2023 October eclipse, um, there weren't as many locations that I could find that were um, biblically prophetic, but they were quite significant. I'll just give you a few of them. Uh, one of the first cities that was covered was Deadwood, which pretty much everyone understands that that's lawlessness. Uh, then Nimrod, and we know who Nimrod was, the ruler of Babylon, who is the first ruler of the one world government. He also represents the Antichrist. You have uh, Golconda, which is a Muslim fort, Battle Mountain, Los Alamos, which we know means nuclear, Roswell. Uh, and again, if you want to find out more about that, check it with Ellen Marzulli. But that to me meant an increase in demonic activity, UFO, alien, AI, DNA manipulation. Uh, and, and we've seen that, and we've seen it in the media um, increasing. Uh, you also had uh, Osiris, which is another name for Mid uh, Nimrod. And then you have uh, Fort Defiance, Iran, and Lebanon. Now, what's interesting to me is in this whole thing, and you look at the whole book and all the locations that were covered, there are numerous mentions of different nations, okay, that are in prophecy. But in this swath october 2023 the only ones that were in there was lebanon and iran how interesting with what occurred or began to occur in october and then you have london and as i was looking at london i thought okay um and i asked my husband how does this have any significance well i've watched your show and um seen some of the uh, events uh where it was talking about um your cop 28 and I'm not sure if that's how it was fulfilled, but there's certainly something going on there with King Charles and, and more. Um, so, yeah, now let me just ask you that. Uh, as far as with, um, the whole path for October 2023 eclipse, was London one of the later ones of where it hit? Yes, it was one of the later ones. And I haven't named all the ones here because I, you know. Right, no, but see, I but I find that interesting because um, with that showing that it was like one of the later cities or the, um, you know, of that, it, that eclipse hit. And then at the end of 2023 in December, and I know some of you who have been watching the program, and if you haven't been watching, please subscribe so you don't miss any um, of the programs that we have on the end times. But we do, I've done a lot of interviews with Craig Bong and I have done some with, um, Tim Cohen, but talking about COP28, which is climate action, but how does London have anything to do with it? Well, because uh, King Charles is really head over climate action. And, and so here they met at, in December, at the end of December of 2023, and it was 198 participants, world leaders all coming together. What was the significance of that? They were taking, they were making sure that each country would ha have an implementation program um, and that everyone would submit an implementation of how they would implement climate action in each country. So for the October 2023 eclipse, you heard Alexis and she had named all these different cities that it covered and there were very, very prophetic end time um, events that have happened covering those names of those cities. So now, um, now, is there anything else you wanted to say about the 2023? Well, when I had done this research, originally, all of this was in 2019 and then 2020. Okay. So I've had this information, kind of wrote my own little book. I didn't know how to publish. I'd never done it before. So it was sitting in a three ring binder. And then when it was published, I didn't really write anything other in there about London other than maybe King Charles. I didn't know. Um, a lot of these things I didn't know. I just wrote down the data, okay? And now when I saw your show and I'm seeing these things playing out, you know, you look at it and it's, it's just amazing. And again, statistically, it, it's beyond chance. Now, in the October 2023, there are quite a few other locations, and I just don't know whether I should go into that, you know, here, but, uh, you know, there are some pretty heavy um, indications there. And I'll, I'll mention one, and that was Battle Mountain, you know, and, it, and um, yes, yeah, some things going on in there. And, and with what happened in October, we see, I also said an increase, MoDOT point, it's an acceleration point. That is one of the locations that was covered, and that's exactly what took place in October. So, um, 
I didn't know. I just wrote it down. <laughs> I'm being a watchman. That's all I can be on. And I want to say, I'm not a prophet. No way. That's not what I'm doing. I'm being a watchman. And I can watch and read. And so can everyone else. They're, you know, they can do it too. So it's right there in the writing on the wall. But I just want people to have the confidence to do that. And as Christians, a lot of times we don't look there because we think we're not allowed to. And that is astrology that I already addressed. That. Right, right. With so many um, scriptures about the signs. Now, I want you to get, uh, and, and also as far as your book, we will have in the description links on how you can order um, Alexis's books because it's very amazing. It's got so much information, a lot more of the locations and the uh, prophetic implications of those. But uh, okay, I also find it interesting when you're saying, okay, we have now, we have the 2017 eclipse now we have this upcoming 2024 eclipse which you said it's unprecedented to have that kind of eclipse just seven years apart right right i did some research and to find out uh, about total solar eclipses occurring in the same spot on the earth and um, found out that the average number of years when a total solar eclipse will hit one location, it'd be crossed against a portion, and it is 375 years. So that's how rare it is for a total solar eclipse to be in one spot. That's the average. So if it's in the northern hemisphere, it's more than 30 years. On the southern, it's five years something. But so yeah, that's wow, quite just quite seven time. years. Okay. Right. So I don't, yeah, people think that it's, oh, we have eclipses all the time. Well, yeah, we do, but uh, it's very rare to have a total solar eclipse crossing only our continent in 2017, and then again, hitting the same spot, just a crossover point. And um, yeah, which it really absolutely looks like it's a prophetic implication regarding the United States. Now, what does, what does the crossover point mean to you? Um, because I, I, there's a lot of prophetic implications just on that X. Well, again, it's my opinion, but um, when I see that we've got, you know, vultures, we have um, the devil's stand table, um, um, and all the events that have been taking place in the United States, and our failure um, as a nation to stick to God's word and turning away from him. And I see that this is a sign showing that, um, I'm sorry, but I don't have warm and fuzzy things to say about the future of the United States. Now, some people are not going to like that, but um, I'm going by what the Bible says, you know, by scripture. But uh, as my opinion, just as I see these things, it's played out that way, you know, uh, it's continued to play out that way. And there are many of your guests and many of the prophetic teachers who I admire and have done a tremendous amount of research and have their degrees and are uh, far more experts than myself. Um, they're out there uh, saying the same thing that, you know, it's not it's not a good, a good sign for America. That's how I see it. We've got the 2024 eclipse uh, crossing over again. And one thing to mention, you know, I see it as a, a pattern with Joseph in Egypt, and being that this crossover point uh, is taking place in a, a in a location called Little Egypt, um, one thing that was mentioned by Joseph, because he was trying to explain to Pharaoh how important and significant it, it was, is in Genesis 41, 32. And it says, and the dream was repeated and doubled to Pharaoh twice, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. So there's significance in this doubling also, prophetically. And um, so I think that we should take note and not ignore it, um, that we're going to hit those same uh, prophetic locations again, Wakanda, um, the vultures gathering, and uh, devil's stat table, and giant city. So to me, it says all that's going to occur, everything that was written in the book of Revelation. It's a convergence of things that are going to take place. Now, do I know when? Of course, I, I, I'm not going to say that my book or that I know the day or the hour of the rapture or the day of the second coming. Not at all. There's no way that we can know that. But I also want people not to be afraid of dates. As soon as they hear dates, they go running, you know, because they think about, you know, the day, day of the rapture, day of second coming. But look, Noah was told in seven days, I'm going to flood the earth, right? <laughs> Joseph was told seven years of prosperity and planning and then seven years of famine. Um, and also, when the angel told Daniel that it would be 483 
years after the decree from Artaxerxes of rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem that Messiah would enter, or rebuilding Jerusalem that Messiah would enter Jerusalem. And he did. Jesus entered on the back of a donkey on uh, 483 years later. So there are plenty of dates throughout the Bible, and I don't think that we need to be afraid of that. Well, um, right, yes, but the thing is, the Lord talks to us about times. He wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be prepared spiritually. And so um, we already know that greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world. We already know that he said he would never leave us or forsake us. So right. we can trust that. But still, there's even uh, the, I want you to talk about that other impl implication, though, of that X of the Tav. Um, now, did you say that the October 2023 eclipse, did it form an Aleph or... Well, it does. I mean, um, but I just want people to understand there's, there's, it's a different piece to the puzzle. Okay. Um, the 2017 and 2024 eclipses are both total solar eclipses and the October 2023 eclipse is an annular eclipse. And that means that when the moon is passing between the earth and the sun, it's at its closest orbit to us. And that means it's our, it's furthest. Um, it's at uh, apogee, is what it's called. So it's a dispersed orbit from the Earth, so it appears smaller. So when it gets in front of the sun, it doesn't cover the sun completely. And you see that from the fire. And the shadow that is cast on the Earth is called the path of angularity. It doesn't get as dark. It's not quite as dark as it is in a total solar eclipse where day has turned to night and stars come out. Yeah, it gets, it gets dark. There's a difference. But it's just not the equal piece to the puzzle when you're making a signature. The significance between the 2017 and 2024 eclipses, there's a seven year period. There's no significant timeline uh, between the 2023 eclipse and the 2024, or the 2017 and the 2020 eclipse. But the October uh, eclipse is definitely significant. I'm not saying it's not, but I'm just afraid that people might get the wrong message thinking that Aleph is beginning and everything's going to be fine. Just be careful about that. Because really, if you want to include Aleph and Tob, you don't need the 2023 20, eclipse to accomplish that because actually in 2017, there's a city that is crossed by that eclipse that is called Alpha. And then when you go to the 2024 eclipse, there's a city there, a location that is covered that is Omega. And we know Alpha and Omega is just Greek for Aleph and Tom. So that's all included in there. And so what I see is, yes, okay, you can see an Aleph there, but I, I really think there's significance in the 2017, 2024 eclipse crossing over and it creating the Tav. And the Tav, as it is said in Revelation, Jesus said, I am the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega, or the Alpha and the Tav, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And that is the Tav. And that is what we have in the crossover when the 2017 eclipse uh, went across our nation. And now you have the 2024 eclipse coming up in April, it's 2024, it's going to cross over and make a toss. And right, and so a tov looks like an X. Yes, and, and I can send you pictures that you can... Right, which we'll, we'll be putting up in everything, but I mean, right. we are seeing um, X all over the place, and I'm not going to say any more about that. You can right. all say are, something. Aren't we? <laughs> right, we are, but no, we're not going to say anything more, except you can talk right. about it in the comments, but um, yeah, of what the implications of what it can an X mean. Now, right. in the 2024 eclipse, can you um, mention again the locations? Because I was really blown away by those locations because they are all such end time locations of end time events that we all talk about of, um, you know, nations, specific names right. of nations that we're all kind of keeping our eye on. So, yeah, if you could say some of those locations. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the 2024 eclipse, um, it's, it contains many different locations. So I'll, I'll just name a few. You've got Russia, China, Jordan, Turkey, Lebanon, Palestine, Egypt, London, Rome, Tunisia, Magog. So all are mentioned in a convergence of events at the end times in Bible prophecy. You'll even find Damascus located right near Gravesville. Okay. As the eclipse path of totality crosses over the exact midpoint, it covers Makanda again, the location of Black Vulture Festival, Giant City State Park, and the Devil's Stand Table once again. And for the finale, it ends on Magog, Moscow, Orient, and Burnt Church. Didn't make it up. Didn't make it up. It's Dana. 
Yeah, no, what's really amazing that, I mean, when you're, it's naming cities that we're all keeping an eye on. I mean, it's, it's over cities. Those names are the names of nations that we're all keeping our eyes on for, by, with Bible prophecy that we've all been keeping our eyes on for decades, except that now it just seems like things are really happening with these places. So I, I find it so amazing because you have so many other places and locations in your book with the 2017 eclipse and, and with the upcoming 2024 eclipse and what the implications can be. Another very interesting thing that I, I found with the 2017 eclipse is that the last prophetic location as it uh, travels across the United States is graves. Okay, graves. Uh, what's that mean? It's quite possible that between the 2017 and 2024 eclipse, that seven year period, uh, that that was fulfilled with Charlie Victor Delta One Niner. Um, we did see a lot of grades. And then looking at India, um, for India, they did not have, uh, they couldn't bury their dead quickly enough. And there were graves that we had viewed in the media all over. Now, has it been fulfilled in that way? I would say so. But if you don't think so, uh, here we are uh, still, um, uh, you know, between 2017 to 2024 and beyond, uh, right on the verge of World War III and also on the verge of another possible X, I can't say, talk about, we can discuss here. Um, so either way, uh, grades to me has been fulfilled. Right. And then it's interesting, again, that you said the X is the Tav, and that's for the crossover with 2017 and 2024 yeah. um, eclipses. So, right. But yeah. again, we ask, like you said, you want people to research themselves. And this, um, your book really has a lot of the information. So exactly. We're, te we're told to test it, look at it, and then look in your Bible and see. Oh. Right. I want to just ask you this, because a lot of people, when they're hearing about the end times and the scary events that are going on, they're just like, how do you not be, live in fear? And I'm just asking you, for you personally, how do you not live in fear? Well, throughout history, the one with the most impeccable integrity is Jesus Christ. And if he said certain things, when he said certain things were going to happen, he fulfilled that. And so therefore, I have no doubt that the promises he's made for the future are, are not going to take place and the promises that he's made to us which is that we believe that he who he is who he claims to be and we put our faith and our trust in him that we'll be saved that we'll need to turn to him and i think these signs are telling us that there isn't much time left um i i don't know when it's all going to occur i leave that up to every individual to look at it and watch that's what we're supposed to do and my hope is that they will watch that they'll be in prayer they'll read their bible they'll research themselves and most of all, they'll turn to Jesus so that we don't have to be afraid. I mean, we have eternity, and that's a lot longer. We're in a temporary body here. Um, we have so much hope in here and, and much to look forward to. I, I totally agree. And even though the Bible you know, talks about the gross darkness, at the same time, his glory is here. His presence right. is here. When you spend time with him, you're in his presence. And, you know, I, I've been thinking about this, Alexis. You know, we're here for such a time as this. You know, we're living here. But when you think of our ancestors, what it took them, let's say, to move to the United, to come to the United States or whatever, they all went through different hardships and yet God provided. Oh, and yes. My history, sorry. I have that my history too. I've done quite a bit of research on my family. And <laughs> when I look at it, I'm just an immigrant shepherd coal miner's granddaughter. I'm not of royalty and I'm the least in my family. <laughs> That's, you know, just all there is to it. And I look at what my grandparents went through. My father was one of the first born in this nation, and, and all of his uncles and grandpa worked in the coal mines when they were just young boys. Um, so, yeah, they worked hard. They came over on ships. And I had known that a uh, great grandpa, he had seven children. Three of them died before they could even move here. And so the hardships are just heartbreaking uh, when we look at our ancestors. Yeah, they so they, they went through a lot of rough times. But the thing is, God, the Lord was with them. And so if you don't know Jesus 
ask him into your heart just tell him that you know you have made mistakes that you're a sinner and ask him to come into your heart and then live in your heart and he'll change you i mean just say father in the name of jesus jesus if you are real if you really are the messiah i ask you to come into my heart change me and i'm telling you if you make that prayer if you really say it in sincerity you would be shocked at all the things that would happen in your life and then pick up the bible and and just start reading it because he'll start showing you things for your life he'll start speaking to you very specifically i mean that's what happened with me and i don't know if alexis if you know but for me um i i got saved by reading bible prophecy i mean it totally amazed me so i mean when i when i saw that these things were written thousands of years ago and now they're coming to pass now and the stuff that you're talking about i was amazed see and we can be excited about it because our hope is in jesus absolutely thank you so much for being on the program thank you janie it's been a pleasure is a major black swan event coming in 2024 Craig Bong reveals the shocking truth. Click the video to watch now.